Zo, welkom. Goedemiddag allemaal. Wat goed dat jullie deze sessie bijwonen en tijd gemaakt hebben om uh, dit webinar te volgen. Het webinar van de introductie van uh, EMTT, Extracorporeal Magneto Transduction Therapy, zoals dat in uh, mooi Engels heet. En um, we vinden het echt tof dat jullie uh, tijd gemaakt hebben. We gaan vanmiddag uh, een uh, nieuwe therapie introduceren. En um, heel bijzonder is dat een jaar of zes geleden bezocht ik de Medica. Dat is wereldwijd de grootste beurs op het gebied van medische apparatuur. Daar verkopen ze spuitjes, pleisters, fysiotherapie apparatuur. Maar ook uh, helikopters voor ambulances en dergelijke. En uh, ik liep naar Storts en ik werd daar uh, uh, ontvangen. En ik moest plotseling mijn horloge inleveren, mijn portemonnee, mijn sleutels. En ik dacht, wat gebeurt hier nou? En uh, ik werd meegenomen naar een of ander obscuur kamertje achter in de stand. En daar stond een prototype van een magneetveldtherapieapparaat. Dat prototype, dat was echt nog fase 1. Dat is heel snel ontwikkeld tot een werkend toestel. En uh, binnen no time zijn met die therapie, met een aantal uh, modulaties, zijn uiteindelijk patiënten behandeld. En uh, die resultaten waren zo goed dat Stots Medical heeft besloten om het door te ontwikkelen, eh, samen met een aantal experts op het gebied van eh, patiënten en therapieën. En eh, uiteindelijk is daar eh, dit jaar de introductie van dit mooie apparaat uitgekomen. En ja, het zou visio niet zijn als wij daarin eh, mee hebben gedacht en voorop hebben willen lopen bij de introductie van deze mooie nieuwe therapievorm. Want... Um, Vandaag uh, uh, hopen we dat we een nieuwe optie toevoegen aan jullie arsenaal als fysiotherapeuten. En dat betekent dat je uh, uh, een aantal dingen kunt gaan doen. Wat ons betreft uh, lopen daarin onze belangen parallel. Want jullie willen sneller en effectiever kunnen behandelen. We hebben de indruk dat met dit nieuwe therapieapparaat dat dat gaat lukken. Het tweede wat wij willen is dat jullie een dominantere rol krijgen in het netwerk van zorgverleners rondom musculoskeletale therapievormen. En um, deze nieuwe therapievorm zullen jullie dadelijk zien, die biedt daartoe ook weer een kans. En het derde wat wij willen is dat de economie van jullie praktijk, dat het daar goed mee gaat. Je hebt nu misschien een lastig jaar, maar op lange termijn denk ik dat wij uh, met deze therapievorm een rol kunnen gaan spelen die uiteindelijk ook meer patiënten naar je praktijk gaat brengen. Vanuit die optiek zou ik jullie ook willen vragen om dit uh, webinar te volgen. Um, dus kijk uh, welke nieuwe patiëntengroepen je eventueel kunt aanspreken. En probeer ook te kijken of je in samenwerking met medisch specialisten of andere specialisten uh, een rol kunt pakken. Die goed is voor jullie praktijk, goed is voor de patiënten en goed is voor de zorg in Nederland. Um, ja, net als Shockwave wat wij geïntroduceerd hebben in Nederland... Percutane elektrolyse, uh, flywheel training, uh, echografie. Dat zijn allemaal therapievormen die we vanuit die optiek uh, hebben geïntroduceerd of hebben meegedraaid in een heel vroeg stadium. En uh, wij zijn vrij zorgvuldig in het kiezen van nieuwe spullen. Uh, en ik hoop dat jullie uh, met deze therapievorm die zorgvuldigheid ook zullen ervaren. En uh, op de trein zullen stappen vroeg of laat om jullie patiënten deze therapievorm aan te bieden. Um, ja, neem kennis van uh, deze nieuwe therapievorm. We hebben een mooie line-up van sprekers voor jullie. We hebben uh, uh, mensen van de firma Storts die uh, jullie bijpraten over de achtergronden van EMTT, over de fysiologische werking van EMTT. We gaan een praktijkvoorbeeld zien. En we hebben professor Dr. Luther Gerdesmeyer uit Duitsland hebben we aan boord vandaag om uh, jullie over de klinische effecten en de uh, werking van deze therapievorm bij te praten. Um, het is een internationaal gezelschap. En zoals aangekondigd gaan we dus ook in de Engelse taal verder. Um, welcome to uh, our guest, the gentleman from uh, Germany, Switzerland and uh, abroad. Uh, it's an honor and a pleasure to have you in this session. Thank you for uh, being there in time. And uh, we will uh, we will listen uh, as good as we can 
to absorb all the information that you have around EMTT and which means that you have uh, a few years clinical experience a lot of theor theoretical um, knowledge and we would love to absorb this information and um, for the first session I would uh, like to uh, ask uh, Raphael Stotz he is the director of the R&D uh, to uh, introduce us the EMTT and the background of that and now I have to do some uh, I have to do some technical things I hope I will succeed and that means that I have to get small and I have to maximize you okay perfect good Ed thank you very much for the introduction um, good afternoon to everyone and uh, thank you for talking in English because my Dutch is non-existent unfortunately but I didn't want to speak in Swiss German or the uh, south of German dialect so we continue with this one um, I will go directly into it and uh, show you the presentation of physical uh, properties of EMTT devices so first of all Stolz Medical we have been founded in 1987 in Switzerland in the heart of Europe it's uh, lying very close to the beautiful region of the Lake of Constant you see it in the background and the red circle which you may see on the left hand side is uh, just indicating with a laser pointer that's actually the base of our headquarter of Stolz Medical here in Switzerland first of all um, that you know who is talking to you my name is Raphael Stotz I'm director of R&D as Ed mentioned I did studies at University of Constance ETH Zurich and Universidad de Chile and I had been working for like a microsystems in the area of confocal microscopes booster technologies it's a quality instrument company and five years ago I joined Stotz Medical and have taken over the responsibility for R&D but today's topic is about magnetolid, the new device for EMTT. And EMTT, here you can read it, it's extracorporeal magnetotransduction therapy. And here you see the device, Volker is. Raphael, microphone is off. EMTT and PEMF for those of you who might know PEMF as another magneto uh, technology. EMTT is working with magnetic fields in the order of 100 kilohertz to 300 kilohertz frequency range so quite fast and we have here something you may understand later on during the talk and we call it the effective transduction power and this is here a number between 60,000 tera per second and 150,000 te uh, Tesla per second, sorry, Tesla per second is the, read, the right unit. The therapeutical range is defined between 10 millitesla and 80 millitesla, and Professor Gerdesmeyer will tell you about that, where it's used and uh, how, it, how it really reacts. I think one important thing you can take as a take home message is the 3D range of the field makes really a big difference between the usage of EMTT devices in comparison to others because these devices they have by far the largest therapy volume of all magnetic systems on the market mm -hmm. and I will show to you later on uh, simulations and pictures what that means but electromagnetism what is it actually well we know the name actually it was found just by chance uh, more or less exactly 200 years ago that was Hans Christian Ersted and he was just um, in a talk, a lecture, and uh, discovered that if there is a battery, as you see it on the right hand side, and there is a wire, and there is a magnetic sensor like a compass, as soon as you put on current into the wire, the compass is reacting. So we have there this battery, the wire, and the magnetic sensor. And as soon as you close it, the magnetic sensor will turn around. And the interesting thing is that this was a real European joint venture because the whole development, uh, the whole theory was developed within 50 years by Volta from Italy, Ampere from France, Ohm from Germany, Faraday and Maxwell from the, the British Islands and others together. So it's kind of interesting that this whole theory could be developed within short time. Magnetic fields, 
a lot of you know that there are lots of different magnetic fields, but look onto this as an example. So the Earth magnetic field, is it stable? Actually, it's changing every 450,000 years to a bit more. And what you see here, you can read it up in Wikipedia as well. The magnetic pole actually is moving a bit, but it's really, really slow. Maybe it's 30 kilometers per year and it's going north, northwest. The strength of the magnetic field, just here to know the number is 45 microtesla, and you will see the differences to us later. There are other examples for magnetic, electromagnetic fields. And here, for example, take Voyager. That's the most distant object of mankind. It was started 43 years ago. And in the meantime, you can read the number. It's 22,663,000,000 million kilometers from Earth right now. And the interesting thing is even that the communication is done at, at the speed of light, it takes in the meantime today 21 hour and zero minutes. Yesterday it was 20 and 59 minutes um, to reach this here, but it takes another 21 hour to get the information back. Actually, why do I tell you this? Without electromagnetics, there were no telecommunication, no mobiles, no TV, no computers, no photos, no Voyager, no fun, and we couldn't have this session. So actually it was Maxwell, James Clark Maxwell, who developed a theory to describe this. And so don't worry, we are talking here about electromagnetic fields, but he found out that frequency is really the important thing that matters. Ed, was there something or can I continue? You can continue, sorry. Thank you very much. Okay. so. Look onto this one. Maybe Ed was almost shocked by these uh, equations, and uh, maybe you are as well, but don't worry, I can help you. Um, you will easily understand the most important thing, and that's actually here in the middle. These four equations describe everything uh, which needs, needs to be known about electromagnetism, but the important thing is that there is, let's say, the, uh, the same behavior for rotating electric field in comparison to a changing magnetic field over time. That's what this equation tells you. And I will tell you more about this one. For all others, don't worry, just look onto these nice signs and think they're looking more or less equal. So it's really about art of mastering the right parameters. We know that a, a magnetic field can be created, for example, if you have a constant magnet, the North Pole, South Pole, you get the field in here, or you have, for example, a coil, you put current through and you get the magnetic field as well. The interesting part starts if you want to make a timely changing magnetic field. And one thing is if you have the coil, you just turn it on and off. Easy, so the magnetic field will change from zero to maximum. With a mechanical version, you should rotate, do something like that one to have a magnetic change, the field change, so more complicated. Actually, this with a coil is the approach to use. We did that. And actually, this key component is driven by a current, electric current of 3,500 ampere. And for sure, you need a kind of a more modern approach to do this, not like um, Ørsted did it uh, 200 years ago. So question, how can you produce 3,500 ampere of electric current to come up with uh, the magnetic fields we are working with? So today, these days, you can take a modern electric car. They have batteries that can produce 1,000 ampere, like this here. It's out of a Tesla at 400 volts. But to reach the 3,500, you need three or even more of these cars and the batteries to provide so much current. Actually, really, really difficult and not the thing we want to do for sure as well. We don't need ours and use it, therefore, with a different approach. So what we do with these systems, we use a resonating oscillator. And with this sketch, you see the principle how it's really done. You have within the EMTT device, you have a high voltage source. You have a capacitor, which is charged. And then with a switch that is opened up to 10 times per second, you discharge the capacitor over the coil. And here you get then this kind of resonance going on between the capacitor and the coil because here the current is going flowing from one side to the other until the energy is gone. And this resonance frequency could be chosen here with 100 to 300 kilohertz by doing this one. 
Some of you might have seen uh, the first system, the first generation of this, uh, that was the previous system called Cell Actor MT1. That was based on a very high voltage of more than 30 kilovolts, you see it right here, and it resulted in a kind of a very massive and heavy device. But here, Magnetilit really faced the challenge, and we have developed now a compact device, second generation EMTT, and we have here exchangeable applicator loop, and this is possible because we have chosen an approach with a lower wall. We are missing your sound, uh, Volker. Oscillating, it goes up to 80 milli Tesla. Then it starts with this kind of decay curve. And within about 120 microseconds, so pretty fast, the pulse is over. And here in the meantime, you have seen 15 to 18 of these uh, pulse um, um, oscillations going up and down. Very important for us is this central part in the beginning. So let's zoom into this, what I circled in green, and look into this one. So here you see, as soon as the charge is going over the coil and back and forth and starts oscillating, there is a very steep curve where it's going up. And this steep curve, as I indicated it in here in green, we call the effective transduction power. So here, this has a value of up to 60,000 Tesla per second and it can be up to 150,000 Tesla per second. It depends, as it's decaying, it's coming from the big value a little bit down. And actually, this just to indicate again, this is the timely changing B field, the magnetic field, and for the body, this looks like a rotation of the electric field. This equation just tells anything else. Whether you have a rotational electric field or you have a timely decaying or changing magnetic field, for where the field is going to, it just results in the same effects. And here is now how the magnetic fields will couple into the body. In the body, normally we don't have magnetic elements who are really directly reacting to magnetic fields. But what we do have is charged particles, ions in all the metabolism, we have ions involved. And for those ions within the body, they, see something like a rotating electrical field and charged particles always follow the electric field lines. And therefore, from outside, we put on magnetic field, but for the body itself, the particles are reacting as it were just a local electric field. So the good thing is with this magnetic field, we can go into the body without really touching it because we have the field equivalent. So how does it work in terms of duty cycle? Here, for example, you have that is reaching. The interesting thing with this one is you do not heat up the body because it's like, like shock waves you may use. This is a kind of a magnetic shock wave just going in there and not heating the body. So you have a high, high duty cycle of, uh, of this. Comparing it with the PEMP devices, here you get an idea what it means on the timeline and you easily see they're really different. They are EMT devices are a class of their own. So you see the magnetolit pulse train, these up to 18 individual oscillations here, they are completed before half of a typical PEMF system has reached that zero again. And I will show you more about the timely behavior in animation. It's important as well to think of where you treat. Normally, you do not treat directly on the surface of the body. So typically, you, you, you treat areas which are below the surface and put something like four centimeters as a, as a first value. And you see already that an EMTT device, which is having here the red line, is having here maximum 60 millitesla reaching at the field depth of four centimeter, where a typical PEMF device is already below that value. So whatever you hear on the market as well about different strength of values, keep in mind that you have to look onto where you are really treating and not just the surface where it might be a completely different value. Now I would like to go more into the area, how the field is distributed in space. 
And as I have shown you already the pictures of these equations of Maxwell, this theory is so well that we can easily calculate this and do not have to measure each and every point. So we can have these kind of nice simulations that are showing really the behavior. You have here this uh, application loop. And if you just lay it down and we look for the wire on the left hand and on the right hand side, we see now here on the image, on the picture, the field strength, which is perpendicular coming out of this loop. So take this just as the distribution of the field strength, strength perpendicular to the loop. So down here, you see the PEMF in comparison to the field distribution of EMTT. And I have chosen here the strength to be limited by the 10 millitesla Tesla that is, uh, uh, according to the literature, known as the minimum intensity you need to have a physical effect, a biological effect on this one. If we overlap these areas, you see how big the area of the MTT device is in comparison to the PEMF device. So around the individual wire, there is a lot of space where we have a lot of energy and magnetic field around so we can easily reach within the body. If we look into this one, we can make uh, these curves. So if you really go away from the uh, application uh, loop, you see how actual wise it's decaying and you have the 10 millitesla reached at about a level of 18 centimeters distance from the coil. So you can reach up to that area into the body. If you go to the left, right, you see how evenly it's distributed to the, to the, to the side. So this here, you see it as well with the lines that are indicated in here. So it's kind of very stable on the same value. And after, after this outside the loop, it's decaying down and then going to zero. The temporal behavior I've just shown you in the other pictures. So this temporal behavior you see here now in a super slow motion, it slowed down by a factor of 100,000. On the left-hand side, you see the decay and the increase and decrease of the magnetic field of an EMTT device. On the right-hand side, you see here the field as it on the, on the same time scale is going up and down for a PEMF device. And here you just see the time slider. So when it reaches here, the zero again, it will restart and you can check again on the left-hand side how fast the EMTT and how big it is as a field in comparison to the previously known um, magnetic therapy form with PEMF. So again, this is de-accelerated uh, by a factor of 100,000, so to make it visible. In a nutshell, here you see a table where you see the differences of the different magnetic systems. The EMTT devices are working in the area of 100 to 300 kilohertz, so easily orders of magnitude higher than other systems. Raphael, we lose sound again. Curve that is uh, up to the level from 60,000 to 150,000 Tesla per second. And the number of oscillations per pulse is at EMTT more than 15 because it goes up and down several times. It's a oscillation, a decaying oscillation. Um, and the 3D range is at least four times bigger than other systems. So I'm back to the summary of the take home messages. The EMTT, this effective transaction power is between 60,000 Tesla per second and 150,000 Tesla per second. And the therapeutic range is defined between 10 millitesla and 80 millitesla field strength. And as you have seen there from the simulations, the 3D range of the fields make a big difference in usage. The MTT devices have by far the largest therapy volume of all magnetic systems on the market. So I thank you so far. And uh, thank you for your attention. Ed, are you back? Ed, I can't hear you. Yes, oh, my it, sound is it's better. better. 
Yeah, thank you. Yeah, okay. Are there questions I can answer? Have you seen something in the chat or something else? There is no question in the chat, Ruth, is it? No. Do you okay. have an echo on me or not? No, I don't. Okay. Um, there's no question, uh, Raphael. Um, that mm -hmm. means that uh, either uh, um, people couldn't understand you, or, but I think that it was very clear what you told us. <laughs> And um, there are a few people that had a, a bad connection and due to that, they lost a part of the session. So we are sorry for that. But the session is continuously in the air. We see that some people have good connection. So uh, please try to optimize your own connection at home to uh, cable your computer, uh, not wireless connected. And um, you can always look it back afterwards where we have the video. You get an email on that. Uh, Raphael, um, it was a clear message. Um, could it be that due to your activities in the magnetic uh, units and the magnetic fields, that the North Pole shift uh, in the Earth has changed? <laughs> no, well, so I can I can confirm that's not a reason for and I, we are not responsible for climate changes. So, no, it's... Uh, it's not that strong, don't worry. Okay, yeah. and um, uh, it looks like there is a similarity uh, between the pulse, uh, between uh, shockwave therapy and magnetic felt therapy. Um, if you have a steep uh, increase of energy in a very short time, and you have an oscillation after that, it, there is a similarity with focus shockwave most likely physical wise i would say this is kind of a magnetic shock wave and the oscillation is by nature to get this current as i described running because it's uh, so difficult to get so much current traveling through a wire and therefore it's uh, it's it, there, but they are quite some similars on the technical side uh, to create such a magnetic shock wave yes okay yeah is there another question Ruth? yeah we have a question of uh, Rohir Stuurman. Thank you, well, Rohir. Um, what is general the maximum working depth uh, that you can uh, use for a magnetic field? So, as defined from from literature, and uh, I'm, I'm sure uh, Ludger will will show it later on as well. The 10 millitesla is defined as the minimum ener energy, uh, as the minimum magnetic field strength you need for having an effect, a biological effect, and that can be reached up to a depth of 18 centimeters from the middle of the coil. Okay, yeah. So that means that in regular people, you can reach the region that you want to treat. I'm pretty sure, yes. Yeah, okay. Okay, <laughs> Raphael, thank you for your presentation. Um, You're welcome. Yeah, which means that we go to uh, Professor Dr. Luca Gerdesmeyer, Welcome to you. Um, we have met a lot of times in uh, the community of the shockwave therapy. You are a professor and you are uh, active in the area of orthopedy and uh, Unfallchirurgie. Um, welcome. You have done a lot of research already on EMTT. Um, and we would like to have your presentation on the biological effects of this uh, EMTT therapy. So you're welcome to uh, share your knowledge. Okay. I will start with the first technical step, um, sharing the screen. Uh, you see me already. Opening the screen. You got it? Yes, we see okay. it. Okay, when you got it, okay, we can run the presentation already. Um, so. Um, I have to thanks to uh, Ed to give me the opportunity to talk about the clinical use of EMTT. And the question which I have to answer most of the times is, why do I work with such a paramedical device like EMTT? Because I'm mostly surgery based in the university. You see the picture of the um, north part of Germany. We have the same it's still the same in the Netherlands. It's windy, cold, it's rainy all day. Sometimes we have some nice days with sunny pictures here. 
And you see on the top of the slides, a new building, our research center. It's a huge and large basic research centers. And we are, do a lot of research for inflammation. And we are, have an excellence cluster. Uh, they have one of the best one we have in Europe uh, working with um, inflammations. And when I go for the AAOS, um, talk about implants, surgeries, approaches, knives, skins, bleedings, and all the stuff. Then I came over the edge and saying, I have something non-invasive, no surgery, no pain, but very effective. The people are mostly smiling, say, go back to your knife, go back to surgery, go for, go for your standard orthopedic surgery. And I try to convince these people and think after, after a talk and after they have listened to my talk, uh, it switched completely. It becomes much more, much more interest. They have, they see so much, many indications. And I was invited from the World Institute of Pain. It's, it's one of the largest pain um, physicians worldwide. And I'm the chairman of the um, Central Eastern part. And I presented EMGT on this meeting and most of them were anesthesiologists, basic researchers, and neurologists. And they looked pretty tired during the talk, but at the end of the talk, they were complete alert. And we got so many questions about how to use it and what is the working mechanism. And it sounds pretty good with all these excellent data we have right now. I'm not the only one uh, who is doing research in, in, in electromagnetic field therapy. If you Google it in, in PubMed, you can see within the last years, a lot of publication comes out. You see, electromagnetic field therapy is right now in the focus of soft tissue engineering since a couple of years. Because, uh, you know, this is a, it's a standard knee, which you can see in my daily practice. I do a total knee in this case, and I make a photo of this knee because where, is this, where does the pain come from? And on the pain, it comes from the inflammation around. For sure, we have a lot of cartilage damages here. We have grade four stage lesions with bony contact. For sure, it's a strong osteoarthritis, but the pain is mostly driven by the inflammation around the knee. And the question is, we should treat the inflammation rather than the degeneration. And this is the key step. And the question is, how, how many options do we have in such kind of knee? Or what kind of options do we have in patients suffering from very strong inflammation, like rheumatoid disease, or psoriasis disease, or generations? We have, in principle, we have two options. It's non-surgical and surgery. Surgery is pretty easy in this kind of, of osteoarthritis of the hip. I put a short stem in, cementless, minimally basically performed, well done, the patient's happy. But if you look for non-surgical options in the early stage of degeneration or mid-stage degeneration, we need alternatives. We cannot do surgery in all cases. And then if you look for the non-surgical part, we have three different um, lines we should follow. Chemical therapy, physical therapy, and biological therapy. Chemical, chemical therapy is pretty easy. Medications, injections. Physical therapy, also pretty easy. Um, physical therapy, um, physical options, um, heatings, icings, cooling, stretchings, fascia therapy, shock therapy, this is all physical. But to stimulate the biology, we don't have many options to deal with. And I think EMTT is a door opener to offer this kind of treatment in this very early stage, mid stage degenerations, and inflammation. This picture is driven from the publication from Funda in uh, 2001. And uh, you see the ingrowth of unmyelined C fibers. These are pain fibers. They're growing into the, into the cartilage where the degeneration is occurring. Um, as, as much degeneration you have, as much increase of new vessels you have, and together with these new vessels, you have an ingrowth of these C fibers. 
in the surrounding areas producing a huge volume of VEGF nerve growth factors and pain mediators like substance P. It's, in, it's a new innovation and the globally termed is known as neurogenic inflammation. More precisely, look for the uh, recept on the receptor basis, um, what kind of protein and cytokines were activated. And these are the really the most known um, um, cascades they are producing pain as a pain generator, or we call it peripheral pain sensitivization by activating the prostaglandin system bradykinine system, uh, prostaglandin system, arachnine acid system, um, and all these receptors were activated and all these receptors are producing constant pain, pain generators. And you can interact with, with, with a simple or just a single um, receptor, but with the EMTT, I will show you later on, you can interact with the whole system. And this is the difference. Um, what we know and uh, from 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 pain research, uh, I want to focus much more on the the expression of uh, cytokines like bradykinine, serotonin, nitrate oxide in, in the whole interleukin system. For sure, we know we have a disturbance of the APT energy balance. We have a change of protons and free radicals and the balance of sodium and potassium. And we have a modulated pain uh, sensation system by the ingress of these C fibers. In the end, it's kind of neuropathic pain. It's a local neuropathic pain driven by overstimulating process and chronic inflammation. So the, the aim should be to, to decrease the activity on this, on this level instead of putting a total knee or total hip in something. It's an end-stage procedure. And the people like it. Um, if you introduce EMTT as an uh, inflammation modulator, you're able, even with four Tesla, you have no idea how, how, how big the energy is. You cannot, you cannot see or feel it because we don't have the receptors. But the MRI, this is, even for Tesla, it's a single impulse. And as mentioned before, it's not the, the, the altitude of a single impulse, it's the speed which, where the impulse is increasing and the frequency. And the birds, some of the birds, they have receptors in the retina. They are able to detect natural electromagnetic fields and they can orientate and they can remember certain areas, and we know it from the nature. And it's published by different authors. Rogers, and this is one of the key publications published in 2009, um, that we have some biological effects, but to induce these effects, you have to jump over a certain threshold. He called it the a certain effective uh, transduction energy or power. And the energy level is known as around 10 millitesla. Everything below, for sure, they have some effect, but it's insignificant without any clinical relevance. And this is the really the difference between all the other electromagnetic devices in the market, like PEM or PST, in contrast to EMTT. I don't want to go further in the, the physics, as mentioned from from Raphael before, uh, it's all based on the Maxwell equation and how does it work. You've seen this slide before, and I still want to, to say again that the, the step steepness of each wave, each impulse, and the speed where the impulse is appearing, this is a huge difference, and this gives you a very strong electromagnetic field. As slow the frequency is, as low the electromagnetic field is. So it's, we have some different parameters uh, that are responsible for such, such a strong electromagnetic fields, which are produced by an EMTT device. 
Um, the question is, how does it work? Um, you have so many magnetic devices in the market, shoe inserts, bracelets, rings, but they have static magnetic fields. They have no effect on the biology. The frequency and the speed of the frequency and of each single impulse, they have strong impact, impact on, the, on the biology. Um, in a very good publication from Weaver, um, they have detected, detected a local electroporation. This electroporation uh, is responsible for the local change on the membrane level. Um, so the reversible electroporation in this process, we create transient pores at the membrane level. So we have micromolecules and cytokines they they can switch over and we can we have it we are opening a transport system this is a reversible effect when the electromagnetic field is disappeared the electroporation is done with this high frequency of impulses in summary we have a very strong effect based on electroporation it's also known that we use electroporation to introduce um, highly charged molecules like DNA to pass certain membranes and, and, and distances. It's clinically used already, uh, but it's not, not known before in orthopedic disease and generations. Another effect is based on the Wolf's law and published from Andrew Ann. Um, in 2009, that they found that micro, micromolecules like DNA, proteins, the whole cytoskelet in collagen fibers, if you put mechanical stress on these fibers, they are producing local electric currencies, and this is producing a local electromagnetic field. Vice versa means if you if you put electromagnetic fields on these fibers, you can produce mechanical effects. At the end, it's, it's a magnetic driven mechanotransduction. So it interacts on the mechanical way. That means uh, electroporation and the piezoelectricity as a basic working mechanism of EMTT. Tablotsky published recently in 2016 a very good review paper and it's worth to read that paper because it's it's opening the knowledge from the physical aspects how it can be used and which kind of machine we, sh we can use and which machine has a ratio to be used in the medicine many machines will be ruled out because they don't fit these requirements and they published also six different effects of um, electromagnetic fields. The effects on the cytoskeleton, this is called the piezoelectric effect, change the uh, probability of ion channels switching on and off. The transport mechanism is changed by the electroporation. Mechanic stress is induced on the membranes by the piezoelectric effect. Membrane bending and debending effects by osteoporation and the effect of migrating membrane proteins receptors. You see, at the end, we have we have many effects, and they all they were all proven. But we have to use them and keep these effects in mind to differenti differentiate which machine it's a proper machine to use. A couple of years, I mean, many years ago, the the working group in Munich from Kraus and Lechner, orthopedic surgeon and physics um, researchers, they have developed a technique is called magnetodyne technique. They've used an electromagnetic field generator with a frequency of 40 hertz to stimulate a second um, um, machine which is placed into the body where two screws were placed into the body into the AVN area in a vascular um, bone necrosis. And by the 
secondary uh, inducer, they producing local electric currency in between these screws by using electromagnetic fields. But the mean working mechanism was not the, the screws inside for the machine output, which is found later on. And you've seen with this machine, they have reached a significant level of 10 millitesla. It was published in 1982 by Krauss and Lechner. In the time afterwards, um, other machines were entering the market, um, tried to fit these machines and to, to improve technical um, properties and electromagnetic properties. One of, the one of the machines is called the MBST machines, it's multi biosignal therapies. And you see the, from the physical point of view, um, they have a very low energetic power of 2.35 millitesla, and the frequency is between 17 and 100 kilohertz. And the, the, the trauma group in Münster University, they did an excellent animal trial to find out the effects of MBSD on the biology. In, within the animal model, they produced an osteoarthritis model, and they've treated the animals with 60 minute, minutes each, seven times with MBSD. They looked for the microscopic, macroscopic, and histological effects, and they found zero, nothing. Um, not surprisingly, if we know the papers right now saying about the energy level published by Rogers, that you have to reach at least 10 millitesla, and this machine is by far too low. So, not surprisingly, they've failed to prove efficiency, but they're still on the market. Another machine which is also still on the market is PST, Pulse Signal Therapy. They try to mimic the normal biology and frequencies, but you see again the 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 effective transduction energy is by far too low and is reaching at the maximum 1.5 millitesla. So even this machine is on the market and the people are still paying for this kind of treatment without efficiency. The the newest generation um, based on the much improved knowledge about electromagnetic magnetism, it's the EMTT device. And you, write, you, you easily recognize right now why EMTT is not PEMP and it's not PST. You can visualize it very easy. I like to show the picture of it because I cannot feel EMTT, but you can visualize it, how it works with a certain movie uh, which you can see later on. So what is the difference to explain it? Uh, these two guys are boxers. They are world championship leaders. And there's a difference, for sure. You, they cannot compete each other. No way. And everybody is easily understanding what, why it's unfair that they should beat each other. Anyhow. Um, Back to the to the basics. Um, this this impulse here is characterized by a very high frequency of many numbers of very effective magnetic field effects, and the effect of transduction energy it's released by very fast increasing impulse, and the speed is mandatory to have biological effects. And it's described by Rafael before that we have so many differences right now between uh, other electromagnetic field devices in the electromagnetic transduction devices. A little bit back to the basic research, 2015, um, a very nice group from Italy, they have created um, defects and they have replaced these defects with certain collagen scaffolds alone, or scaffolds settled with BMC or BMC plus PEM therapy in combination. And they did the treatment four hours a day in 40 days. That means a lot of treatment was done. 
And what they found is um, just at an at an, at an door opener to see you can improve tissue engineering effects. It's well known if you if you settled BMC on on scaffolds, the ingrowth rate is by far bigger. As you see, you see here, you see just the scaffold, and this is scaffold plus BMC, and this is the um, the entity alone, and this is a whole treatment that means the entity plus BMC on the scaffold. The key, the key message from this very early study says that you can use BM, um, EMTT also in surgery to improve regeneration, to improve healing, and to improve soft tissue engineering. It could be used as standalone therapy, but it could be used also in combination with other options. And this is another big step in point in favor for the EMTT. Electromagnetic field therapy is also used to look for the effects on bone. And in this uh, animal trial, Barak and workers, they published in 2015, the effect on implants inserted in the T-bell metaphysis. And they sacrifice these animals um, after spent four weeks, and they look for the effects with or without electromagnetic field therapy. And what they found that the bony integration was significantly better when the implants were treated with electromagnetic field therapy. So the power which is needed to, to remove the implants, in, in, implants was by far bigger than without treatment. And the bone mass density around the implants was significantly higher. So in, the, in another animate trial, it was shown that electromagnetic field therapy it's appropriate treatment also in alliance with surgery with the implants of, of any um, implants in knee or hip or that, everything else. A very simple study, it's a meta-analysis done by Hahnemann, uh, published 2014. And they look for a number of publications dealing with PAM therapy in uh, acute fractures in adults. And they summarized and they concluded that electromagnetic therapy is significantly shorten the time of bony consolidation. It's a very big uh, publication, and uh, it should you can keep in mind that um, electromagnetic field therapy is a good tool to make soft tissue engineering in bone. Uh, the Chinese group they are also very effective, and they. They're publishing right now that within the last two years a lot of papers, and they found that with electromagnetic therapy, you are inducing a very strong neovascularization, expression of BGF, and P acting ENO system, and all these factors were significantly better and better expressed in the treatment. So the, the, the capillary density after um, electromagnetic field therapy is by far bigger than in the same group. Very simple trial. And one of the earliest uh, clinical trials dealing with electromagnetic field therapy in low back pain. Um, you know all these cases you have in your in your office, have spinal fusion on two levels, have a revision surgery, another another uh, fusion surgery at the adjacent level. And the patients are still unhappy. They have low back pain, they have radiation pain into the leg, they have radicular pain, and you don't have any options in these cases. And you see in this trial, <coughs> it's the initial trial, they found improvement on the Oswestry Disability Index score uh, between 50 and 55% in these cases. With this knowledge, um, Storage comes to me and we discuss, we should work with these kinds of machines and which parameters should be optimized to create huge and better clinical effects. And they are producing the EMTT technology and I've used this machine, experimental machine, 
uh, to analyze the effects on, on human stem cells. I harvested these cells from my surgery, from my cases, from the a human uh, femur hip, and we did the analysis and looking for the expression of collagen, alkylic phosphatase, osteocalcin, VGF, and BMP2. And you can see in this very simple slide that the, the green one, it's controlled, it's remained stable on the same level, still, still expression ex activity on the cells as normal. But you see it's bigger, significantly better, better in favor for the ENTT groups. Saying that we can confirm that electromagnetic field therapy has relevant effects on the biochemistry and the expression um, capacity of these cells. And with this knowledge, um, I had the machine right now in my office, and, and the question is how to use the machine? What is a good indication? Where are the limits for this machine? And which cases I should offer this technology? And by reviewing all the literature, I remember that improvement of all these metabolism uh, is summarized by all the publication. That means I should use EMTT in a, in a local ischemic condition. And I do by myself a lot of long distance triathlon races. And normally the races are on Saturday or Sunday. And Monday when I go to my office, I have really painful legs by climbing up the stairs. It's very painful for at least two or three days. So it's fatigue pain. And I did the EMTT randomly on one leg of the most hurting muscle parts. And it was every treatment, the treatment, the treated leg performed much more faster, better, and less pain as a control. I did it six times, and six times the same answer by myself. I'm biased because I use the machine and I know which leg was treated, but with this with these findings, I offered it to a number of cases of 168 cases. It's a prospective uncontrolled cohort study to find out what is a good indication for EMT. And you see, I have enrolled shoulder patients, low back pain patients, arthritis patients with hip and knee, heel pain, bony, bony non-unions, wound healing disturbances, radiculopathy due to bulge disc, and also neuropathic pains. And what you see in this from this initial data is from my from my office, um, most of them will repeat. 125 out of 168 will repeat the treatment. 26 will not repeat because they have to pay the treatment out of the pocket. In German, it's it's very treatment. I, I offer the treatment for a little bit more than 30 euros one treatment, and only 17. Only 17 out of 167 will not repeat, repeat because of lack of efficiency. So if this is true, uh, this is a very high success rate in these very um, large uh, numbers of indications in this trial. And with this data, I go for our professional um, next generation soccer players. The, um, next 10 Bundesliga soccer players. We have based these training camps in, in Kiel and um, 28 out of them, they come to my office with soft tissue injuries, injuries after football playing and after training. And they get all these, these um, EMTT treatments um, eight times, two times a week and 27 out of 28 return back to their regular sports level. And the acceptance rate was such so high that these kids they're communicating via their network, like I don't know what WhatsApp or Facebook, something else. They connected very good, and within two or three weeks, I got numbers of other football players from other parts. They want to come to my office to get the treatment with all these indications. So I have to stop it because. It's, it's, they swept like, like a wave in my office and too much patience in my office.
to get this treatment. One of the cases is um, they have a very painful knee. They have an activated osteochondritis morbosal. You see on this picture, you see the activated apophysitis, and this is very hard to deal with. And everybody who has these um, young athletes, um, they know it's pretty hard to to treat these cases with in in a very effective um, option. You can use it should cooling physical options like like ice sprays and all this stuff, but the efficiency rate is pretty low. You could you don't you cannot make surgery on it. You can put the patients to rest. Say you have to wait for six months, then you go back to your normal activity level. But you cannot offer this kind of treatment to um, young semi-professional football players because if they are off the team for four weeks. They're mostly gone. So for this reason, I offered the EMTT. I did it eight times. You see the protocol. 80 mini Tesla frequency application was three hearts and eight times 20 minutes. And all of them, they go back to normal activity level. The trainer, I've discussed the trainers about the, the training program. They modify a little bit the program, but Normally, within six weeks, they are back on track. This is another case. You see um, on the right side, the X-ray, very painful, full weight bearing, not possible. Even even half body weight, weight bearing, not possible. He wasn't. He, he is a very light player, 14 years old, no option. They offered surgery and nailing and plating. And off the team for at least nine months and still unsure he's able to go to still to play football later on and we offered them as an ultima ratio um emtc and you see the treatment protocol same protocol 80 millitesimals three heart application frequency and eight times for 20 minutes and on the control x-rays you see pre-treatment after treatment and 10 weeks after, it's bony consolidated, pain is gone, full weight bearing, and back to the football field. This is a very good alternative. Another, I think, a very excellent alternative for all surgical intervention are bone edemas. If such, this is also a football player, and after the tournament, uh, he did an MRI, and you can find these very intense signals a lot of a lot of down to 1.4 this is incredible because it's the entity is bought without any side effects it's very safe and with these data we communicate to each other and and even professor Carsten Knobler from Hannover he's very much involved in the professional elite football players and he's happy with the results even in these very demanding cases. It's very specific bone edema is the chronic osteitis of the oscubis. And you see on the right in the MRI here, you see the very signal intensive um, field on the osteitis pubis. But what options do you have? Rest, cortisone, surgery is not an option, wait and see mostly. And wait and see means nine months, 10 months, more or less pain. And with EMTT, um, which is done by Martin Ringeisen in a lot of cases, you see also it declines from eight down to close to zero within three months. This is safe without any side effects. And right now in my office, I'm offering EMTT to all cases that come in with an osteoporosis because it's the best evidence. In the summary from our initial findings and applications, um, I think we have three very big fields. Um, it's all the de degeneration and inflammation. It's pain therapy. Even unspecific pain could be treated with EMTP. And we have very specific indications in support injuries. These are the main fields. In the future, I don't know how many new indications will appear. 
for contraindications for EMTT, um, up to now, we recommend, uh, we, we say no treatment in patients with pacemakers or other electric uh, implants into the body. Frequency, we are unsure. An implant is still known as a contraindication, but as I said before, I using EMTT for all my total knees and total hips, I offer them for a better bony integration and to reducing the inflammation. And the clinical answer is a high number of these patients, they don't need enzymes after surgery. They're just taking the EMTT. And I think the, the, the cementless implants, the, the ingrowth rate, and the risk of failure by loosening will be decreasing significantly by using EMT. Should be a, should a standard of care later on. Um, as you are also a uh, shockwave users, and as Ed said, um, you're using radial and focus devices. Um, the question is, are they acting in the same way or are they acting in a different way and should be used together both or as standalone therapy and we did a clinical prospective randomized controlled trial published by um, tim Kluter in the electromagnetic biology in medicine 2018 and we have enrolled 86 cases suffering from a tendinopathy on the shoulder and we have Two different groups. We have the um, standard care group with 42 cases getting shockwave treatment, focus device, as published in the JAMA with the protocol. And we have the same group getting same, same shockwave treatment plus EMTT in combination. And you see the protocol, you see the device which was used, and we use the same parameters. Uh, in accordance to the evidence-based guidelines, three times 1,500 shots, 0.32 millijoule per square millimeters. Application interval was two weeks, no local anesthesia was used. This is the standard care, 42 cases. In the other group, they got the full the same treatment plus the EMTT protocol. And then we're looking for the outcome. And two things, uh, I can report from this trial is, you see on the red lines, the standard shockwave protocol, similar results as seen in previous publications, but you see in the black lines, if you combine ESVT, ESWT, together with EMTT, the outcome is even better. And we're talking about 10 to 15% improved outcome in these chronic cases. Same results were found in the VAS scoring system, means if you combine EMTT with shock for treatment, the outcome is even better. And what we have learned right now is we should use shock for treatment for a very precise local treatment. But EMTT, it's much more a regional enrichment treatment. That means tough tissue engineering, providing better supply and energy for the effects of shockwave therapy. I think in the future is the combination would be the golden standard later on. Looking for these cases, um, patients got a spine infusion surgery, still have low back pain, um, no more options useful to make. And we have offered these cases um, EMTT. And uh, Andre Kraat from our university published in the Journal of Orthopedics 2017 these data um, where it compared conservative treatment versus conservative plus EMTT, prospective randomized controlled trial. And you see 88 cases were enrolled in this non invasive trial, and we're looking for the effect sites using the EMTT protocol, which you have seen before, three, three hertz frequency, um, 80 minutes are used, and eight times 20 minutes application. And you see on the VS score, in the conservative group, still, if you're doing conservative treatment, people could be happy, but they are significantly more happy 
if you combine conservative treatment plus EMTT in combination. Same was found if you do the analysis using the Orthopedic Disability Index score in favor for the EMTT group. Another indication, uh, together with the group of Amol Saxena, um, Brian Fulham, they are excellent podiatrists and sports physician in the States. And we used EMTT um, to improve the outcome in patients suffering from a chronic Achilles tendinopathy. And we did standard care. Standard care means, according to the ACFAS guidelines, it's the American Foot and Ankle Society. And we did this conservative group, and the second group got the shockwave treatment, similar to the protocol we've used in low back pain group. You see the protocol, you see the machine, and you see the outcome means um, the conservative group improved after 12 weeks. The conservative group plus EMTP again was found to be better. And the percentage was 20% in favor for the EMTP group. You see in shoulder, in low back pain, in heel pain, it works always the same way. Based on these these findings, we have designed a monocentric um, prospective randomized placebo controlled trials, and these data are very preliminary. And we're looking for the effect EMTT only, no more treatment, just EMTT as a standalone therapy in 52 cases. And you see in this prospective controlled trial, you see a slight improvement in the control group, but you see after EMTT, 12 weeks later, the, um, the pain score drops down by more than 60% in patients suffering from chronic, unspecific low back pain. Uh, we talked about, or I've talked about inflammation previously. And based on these inflammations results, where we have a huge effect on the interleukin system, an Italian group is using magnetic fields in patients after total knee atroplasty to reduce swelling, lymphatic edema, and local inflammation. And they published a paper in International Orthopedics 2014, prospective randomized controlled trial, and they've used very low magnetic field intensities, but even on this low level, they found the VS4, that the treatment group performed better than the control without any treatment. Means um, patient after total knee atroplasty are no longer contraindications for EMTT um, devices. The second prospective randomized placebo controlled trial was designed in patients suffering from a chronic osteoarthritis of the knee. They have a pain interval clinical relevant pain of more than six months, they got all the conservative options without results. And they were enrolled in our prospective trial. And we look for the data. And you can see also after 12 weeks, how big the effect is in patients getting EMTT. I offer in my cases, they were scheduled for surgery, um, sitting on the waiting list, offering them EMTT in this protocol. And they confirmed and they got it in a huge number of these cases. They have declined surgery. They say, okay, I want to go back to EMTT. I will use EMTT twice a year, but three times a year, I'm happy with the result because then I don't need surgery. I'm happy because pain is gone. And the second last um, recently performed and finished prospective randomized controlled trial was done on patients suffering from rotator cuff and tendinopathies. And you see similar results. That means more than 60% improvement in comparison to placebo. And you see in all these data and all these trials we did right now, up to now, we have not seen even one trial failed to show a difference in favor for EMTT. So it looks like EMTT, it's, it's um, like, like something like a door opener in soft tissue engineering. It's a very um, 
good tool to combine other options. It's also very effective as the standalone treatment. So what is the future? Um, I think EMTT is able to moderate um, effects on the receptor and membrane levels. And we can translate right now the complexity of biology into new um, therapeutic options we have, or we're looking for. And one of the biggest fields is really soft tissue engineering for soft tissue repair. Um, decreasing inflammation, increase the expression of repair cell mechanism. We can interact with the cascade directly with excellent results. You see, you know these, you know these, these um, materials, um, skin grafts, bone grafts, um, vascular grafts. The problem with all these grafts is the integration and the um, reperfusion of these materials, and this is a key step. And if we can, we can improve the ingrowth rate. Um, the results will be much more better in all these. Um, Method, method. Tim Glüter published in an excellent overview uh, um, journal in 2020 that in soft tissue engineering, tools like EMTT will be the door opener in the future. So these are the underlying principles to have better outcome on these very demanding conditions. You see skin grafting, implants, surgery, pain syndrome, chronicity. We, we, you can activate and stimulate all these interfaces and surfaces with EMTT. This is a very big field in the future. And at the end for my talk is question is what else is needed? Um, I think we need a strategic alliance, a partnership in between users. We should communicate. Look for excellent indications, communicate our results, and to see which is the best option. And my philosophy is sharing the expertise, is presenting the data, discussing the cases, presenting the problems, to learn from each other, to exchange the experience. And it works on the surgery as well in the non-surgery field. So the take home message from my, my talk is um, pretty easy. EMTT is it's a very new generation of electromagnetic field devices. It has a very significant strengths and is really fitting the EMTT characteristics. That means speed and frequency and energy level in comparison to other devices. And it could be used as a tool in focal treatment modalities with focused devices or local treatments with radial devices. And EMTT has, has very deep penetration. They don't, and EMTT is not losing the energy after a depth of 15 or 18 centimeters. And we don't have any options to make soft tissue engineering in such depth areas. And another effect is, the new storage device is already labeled under the new MBR. And this is for the future, uh, it's very important. So from my point of view, uh, I'm done so far. Um, I'm pretty sure a lot of questions will arise. Um, maybe you, you get some new ideas from EMTT and combinations and the future. If you have any question, you can talk to Ed or just send an email to my uh, AOL dot com email address i will answer it um, if you want to have any paper or pdf file which you don't have access uh, just let me know and i will try to send it to you um i'm not sure that um technically where i am finished my presentation i see the pictures okay yes you see it Okay, um, well, Lutke, it was a great lecture. As I uh, know from you, you are very detailed and very uh, much involved in, uh, in your patients and the material that you talk about. And um, I have a, a question um, uh, from the audience and from myself. You talk about no. soft tissue engineering, 
which means that you give a stimulus to the body and the tissue uh, changes. In physiotherapy, we do that uh, with movement, with shockwave, with other yeah. means of uh, therapy. Do you think that uh, in your group of patients, for example, with arthrosis, osteoarthrosis, do you think that um, younger and older people can be treated with magnetic field, with EMTT? Do they both respond with tissue engineering? Or is your option in elderly people um, that you uh, do the operation earlier? Yeah, I said before, I'm I'm trained as an orthopedic surgeon. I did by myself more than 5,000 total hips or 5,000 total knees, so 10,000 total joints altogether. This is my my daily work. I am very deeply impressed about the effect rate in cases that were scheduled for surgery. And from this point of view, um, seriously, I'm offering all cases right now EMTT. Um, as an alternative to surgery. I think uh, EMTT is working um, independent from age because the working mechanism is universal. Uh, it's working in trauma. I'm pretty sure the, the, the post-trauma pain and edema in soft tissue, tissue injuries are interacting and responding to EMTT in the same way, independent from the age. Hmm. Okay, thank you. Are there other questions for Ruth? I read this. I read this question with tumor in the treatment area. Yeah. yeah. John Dax. He's. I hope he's still online. Um, tumor. Yeah, we discussed it. Uh, I think tumor should be and still remain as a contraindication because we don't know. We can stimulate the tumor um, biology. Or do we interact with the anti-tumor biology? We have no any idea. Um, with the lack of these knowledge, I, I strongly recommend to avoid treatment of EMTT in tumor areas. Yeah, exactly. And um, uh, it shows that you you have the um, the depth of the treatment. I didn't hear you say that superficial uh, problems respond better than deep problems. Uh, maybe that's also a question for uh, Raphael. Does the pulse change uh, while penetrating in the body? It was one of the questions in the audience. Yeah, I've seen that in the audience as well, but it's difficult to really tell. So um, it, it, we don't think that the pulse is really changing a lot. Certainly, uh, physically, if you have uh, something that is absorbing, the pulse will change a bit. But here we are talking about individual ions or molecules that are really in there. Uh, most of the material will not react on this one, but the important things are reacting, and therefore I I expect that the uh, uh, the field is not really changing. Okay. Yeah. From my from my point of view, um, um, just ask just answering the clinical um, reaction. If you have a patient suffering from a bulge disc, which gives you a neuro entrapment of the neuroforamen and it gives you some low back pain. It's the depth is about eight to 10 centimeters. Uh, with shockwave, you're losing all the energy in the depth. You, it's just, mm -hmm. it's, you cannot deal with shockwave in this kind of pathology. But with right. EMTT, you, you're originally reaching the tr a very deep area. And as far as I know, you don't have any options. Even a good physiotherapist using the fingers, you don't have such a long finger and stiff finger to have an impact on the neuroforamen. But with the EMTT, you can treat pathologies which is afflicting the dura, the neuroforamen. It's a neuritis. It's, it's pretty good. Yeah, great. Yeah. There is an, uh, another question. Um, let's see. What is, uh, when you talk about the pain relief, um, you have shown that uh, the, the period of two and three months or in weeks, what the pain does. What is the pain relief after one treatment? Does it uh, is it immediately there, and does it uh, stay there for days, or what is the curve? Uh, it's it's um, I, it's my experience right now. I have overview about one thousand five hundred cases, and all the cases were reviewed. Um, sometimes the patients are 
interacting directly. And some people reporting about pain during treatment. Some people that don't tolerate the energy level. Um, patients suffering from very sensitive uh, inflammations like neuritis or trigeminous neuralgia or an acute bulge disc within radical pain, uh, you cannot touch the nerve. And if you put some energy on the nerve, the patient's feeling radiated pain. You have to decrease the energy level on, to the tolerance level. And uh, I tell the patient that the day of the treatment, they should expect a higher pain level. But the day after, it's decreasing and slowly decreasing. And stepwise, it, it jumps down. And I have only really just a very little few of numbers that don't um, respond to EMTT. OK, thank you. OK, we have some other questions, but um, due to the uh, schedule, we, uh, we have to go on. Um, Volker, uh, I would like to invite you to uh, your session. We will jump to the, uh, to the clinic, to the treatment uh, room, and you will inform us about what happens there and how to use uh, the EMTT unit. Yeah, thank you very much, um, Ed, for your introduction. I'm just um, setting up my presentation. Just a moment. Okay, so thank you very much um, for giving us um, the platform to talk about um, the EMTT and uh, the Magnetolith. Um, my name is Volker Westerholt, and I'm the product manager of the Magnetolith. So in the next, um, yeah, around about 10 to 15 minutes, um, I like to talk um, about the product. Um, I want to give you some insights, um, the key features, um, uh, talking about um, why to use uh, the Magnetolith. Also, um, in the in the terms of that you are already using um, shockwave devices, and um, as you said, um, I want to give you um, some information on um, how to get started. So the recap of the previous session, and it's honestly quite difficult um, because it's uh, got very strong um, information uh, inside. But um, the recap and my personal takeaway in very easy words um, from the session from uh, Raphael was that we have on the one hand side a high oscillating magnetic field which leads um, to a high effective um, transduction performance. And this performance you basically need in order to start biochemistry processes, for instance, uh, which use electroporation and uh, piezoelectricity. So um, the, the basis is basically that we have a fast rotating electromagnetic field in order to have um, an effective um, outcome um, at the end. But um, for your, um, uh, for the listeners, um, the question is, okay, why treating with EMTT, especially when you are already um, using uh, shockwave devices? So let me give you some um, arguments in terms of um, uh, discussing that. So what we heard um, so far is um, that one big advantage of the magnetolid is that you can treat especially unspecific pain. So on the right hand side, um, for instance, we have unspecific low back pain and you have the possibility um, with a coil, with the size of the magnetic field to address a large region at the same time. Whereas you have on the other hand side um, with a focus shockwave device, um, the, 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 the issue that you're um, addressing a pain point. So you're working on the spot and um, I guess that is one really big advantage in terms of the EMTT technology. And uh, we have discussed um, a lot of um, in terms of, of pain and increasing pain um, to the patient. Um, what we have seen so far is um, that um, the, the potential or the additional pain which you give um, to the patient is quite low. And especially on acute inflammations, um, we see that um, it is an extreme attractive uh, treatment uh, therapy or therapy concept um, in order to not address additional pain um, to, the, to the patient. 
What we have seen also so far from um, from Ludger Gerismay is um, that we have a very, very wide range of uh, treatment possibilities. So the system has been approved for chronic musculoskeletal diseases. And you have seen um, already below, we have um, these three buckets and the degenerative joint diseases like arthrosis. You can use it for a pain therapy like um, unspecific low back pain but also for sport injuries um, like acute inflammations um, of tendons and joints. So let's say the, the, the playground um, for the um, physicians is um, quite extensive. Um, what is also really important um, to highlight is um, that it is non-invasive and it is um, a very comfortable um, treatment on the one hand side um, for the patient, um, but also on the other hand side um, for, the user, for the user. It is very easy to handle. It is a contactless uh, treatment. The patient doesn't need to undress. Um, it is also a matter um, of, of time. And um, what I see um, today um, nowadays in, in terms of, of uh, COVID, unfortunately, you can use it um, static. So in this sense, um, you can position the applicator onto um, the um, area which you treat. And you don't have to stay the whole time with the patient. And yeah, as I said, um, especially in these days, um, it is um, um, quite comfortable and uh, positive um, that you don't need to be with the patient um, for, the, for the whole time as you undergo um, the treatment. What we have seen um, so far, um, it is um, you can combine it with um, Shockwave. And personally, for me, as um, let's say the, the customer, as um, the patient, it is also quite um, attractive because it does matter if I need to go four, five, six, seven times um, to the doctor. I need to carve um, that time out of my daily business. And um, if you do combine it, and we have seen um, faster results um, in the combination um, Shockwave and EMTT. So setting up the scene. So what kind of um, treatment parameters um, do you use? And what are the permissions we have seen so far already? And what kind of precaution measures um, do you need to undertake? So based on the existing clinical studies um, which have been conducted with the um, previous um, model the selector mt1 um, the clinical studies have shown that um, in average um, there have been 2000 to 3600 pulses um, applied per treatment um, with a magnetic field strength of 80 millitesla the duration um, was between 15 and uh, 20 minutes. That was um, given basically the circumstances um, that the previous device was just able to work with um, three hertz, means um, you were able to apply three pulses per second. And um, with the same device, uh, with, a, with a new device, with a magnetolid, um, you basically can reduce now the time um, down to eight to nine minutes if you apply the same amount um, of pulses. However, the system is working with um, 10 pulses or up to 10 pulses per second. So in terms of um, treatment permissions, um, we have um, discussed that um, so far. So let's um, skip um, over that. Um, yeah, the precaution measures. Um, we have uh, spoken about uh, the tumors. So far, we um, not recommend to hold the applicator directly onto the affected area because, um, as, as uh, Ludger stated, we just don't know um, if uh, that is um, causing more damage. Um, what has been discussed and what is really important is um, the topic around um, tattoos and permanent makeup. So. There are just very, very, very um, rare cases um, of um, people who had tattoos and uh, they under, uh, they, they um, had an um, MRI scan. And um, in these uh, rare cases, we saw that um, the area of the tattoo um, was heating up. Um, why this? Um, so in some cases, um, the ink, um, especially blue and black ink, 
could um, contain metallic um, particles. And if you have then um, a special form of the tattoo, um, like, like, like a circle, um, you might have a circuit breaker. And if you have um, uh, this case, again, which is very rare, it could happen um, that um, this area heat, um, um, heats up. So if you have a patient and he says, oh, it's getting hot in here, you should um, stop um, your treatment and um, cool um, the affected area. But again, we haven't seen that um, so far. And uh, the cases which we are aware of um, MRI scans are um, also very seldom. Yeah, we discussed implants um, or implants which are conditionally safe marks. Um, the suggestion or the precaution measure so far is also there not um, to hold um, the applicator directly onto the implant. As we just don't know um, if, um, if or that you have um, a reddening on the treatment area, but um, these side effects um, generally abate after less um, than a day. So what we do have is um, a quick reference guide um, in order to get um, started. So on the left-hand side, you basically see the main um, control elements um, of the user interface. We have the display elements. Um, so um, there's one, um, the, um, the, the high voltage test, for instance, which needs to be conducted once a day. And we have a very lean and um, easy um, user interface, which can be used um, right away. For the daily practice, um, what is important um, to mention at uh, that stage is um, that you need um, to have a safety distance to other medical devices of at least um, one meter and also to um, electronic devices like um, sport watches and cell phones um, or credit cards. So these devices could um, interfere um, with a with magnetolith um, or could even be um, uh, destroyed. What you should also be in mind is um, that uh, once you um, undergo um, uh, um, the treatment, uh, don't hold um, the applicator too close um, to the base unit. So um, we say that the um, normal distance or, or a distance which is acceptable is approximately um, 30 centimeters. Um, in terms of um, pacemakers, um, the safety distance is approximately two meters and, and uh, to, to person with um, other electronic um, implants. So you as a user, as a, as a physician, if you um, are wearing um, a pacemaker or electronic implants, you're basically um, not allowed um, to use um, the device. So let's have a quick look um, onto the magnetolith itself. As we have seen um, so far, the device is using a very high rotating magnetic field up to 130 kilohertz. Um, you can adjust the frequency from one pulse per second up to 10 pulses. And um, basically it is, is something what you need to, to um, investigate yourself, what is working uh, best for you. And for me as a patient, um, if I'm getting applied, let's say 2000 pulses, and um, you're working with um, 10 pulses per second, um, the um, treatment is um, over quite fast. And so what you can do is um, you can go down um, with the frequencies in order to have a, a longer time um, um, having the, the patient on the, on the treatment couch. We have um, six intensity levels. So these intensity levels correlate um, with um, the magnetic field strength. So um, you can adjust it um, from level three to level eight. So level three is approximately 30 millitesla and um, the highest level is uh, the um, 80 millitesla. Yeah, the touch display, it is really, um, easy um, um, to use and um, you can adjust um, the energy level, the frequency and um, the total amount of pulses. So we kept it um, quite easy. Um, I know that um, there are um, um, competitors on the market and um, competitive devices where you can um, model um, the, the, the pulse and, and the, um, itself, but basically we don't know or we don't see any kind of um, benefits uh, in this.
What is kind of um, clever is um, the holding arm, which you see in front. So it uses just one single knob in order to position the applicator. And um, that is honestly very, very convenient um, for, um, for the physician um, when you, when you um, position the applicator onto the treatment area. What we have seen as well um, on, on other devices on the markets, uh, you have three screws and it's not that easy um, to um, position the applicator. What is um, also a key feature is um, the water-cooled applicator. So um, it gives you a continuous and reliable operation. And at the end, if you are a um, power user, you can um, use um, the device 24-7. Um, so you just can go on um, with the treatments and um, without any kind of interruption. Yeah, the user interface, um, I have um, explained so far what is um, to add in the in the service menu or in the, in the menu at the, the right hand side. Um, you get um, additional information about um, the lifetime of the device. You, you get the a pulse counter for the coil as well as um, for the device. And you see the total working hours um, of the coil and um, the device. Yeah, service and maintenance, um, that is quite lean. So the service effort is is really um, uh, very low. So except for a um, water um, exchange um, every six months, um, there is no um, additional service or maintenance required. And um, yeah, the water exchange takes approximately um, five minutes and um, that reduces um, yeah, the downtime of the device um, quite tremendously. So you just can go um, uh, working with the device uh, without any, any interruptions. What I like to point out as well, so is that we have lots and lots and lots of um, additional information uh, which you can use um, for yourself on the one hand side, um, but as well for your patients. So one point is um, the EMTT info page and um, just type in emtt.info and uh, in there you will find um, yeah, some, some interesting information for, for the patients about the EMTT therapy. Um, but uh, you can also um, locate devices and you can register yourself if you are a magnetolith um, user. You can register your device and um, it will be shown on a nice uh, map. In addition to that, we have um, the ICE shockwave portal for registered um, users. And in there you have really um, a lot of very, very interesting information. We have all the webinars from our webinar series, which we have undertaken in the last month. And um, also the, the webinar from um, uh, Ludger Gerdesmeyer and Carsten Knobloch talking about the EMTT, if you want to duck dive um, deeper into that topic. We have marketing material, of course, like um, the patient flyer and um, yeah, many, many, many more. What I like to um, show you, and I'm getting now to the end of uh, my presentation, um, during the lockdown, uh, lockdown phase, um, we have done um, a couple of um, nice uh, product um, um, uh, videos, how to get started. And unfortunately, I can't show you um, the device um, live here in this room, um, therefore this video. And uh, from our um, and from Karina Hale, um, our application specialist, and we have also um, a short video um, which is uh, showing you the standard treatments. So I would stop my presentation right here and um, go into the videos and um, afterwards I'm open for any kind of questions from your side. In this video, I'd like, video, I like to show you the main device the main with device, its accessories, with this accessories to show you how to get, to started, how to get started, as well as to as show you the main functions, the main functions, the main functions of, the of the user interface. So what do you get? 
we have the base unit, which is firmly connected to the trolley at the side. We have the applicator with its holder. And in front, we have the holding arm, which can be easily adjusted with one single knob. To get started, switch on the device at the back. The startup takes approximately 20 seconds. Please note that the user is prompted to conduct once a day a high voltage test. So what is the test about? The test checks any interference and the energy levels. So now let me explain you the core functions of the user interface to define the treatment parameters. You can define the energy level in six steps from level 3 to level 8. In the second row, you can adjust the frequency of the pulses from 1 Hz to 10 Hz. 10 Hz is equal to 10 pulses per second. In the third row, you can define the maximum pulses per treatment. The limit can be adjusted while you treat the patient. On the bottom, on the left, you find the pulse counter. In the middle... Volker. Volker, sorry to interrupt you, but um, the video was not uh, playing anymore. Sorry, do you want me to start it again? Um, we can try one once time again. Shall I do it? Yes, yeah, please. Play video. In this video, I like to show you the main device with this accessories. And in front, we have the holding arm, which can be easily adjusted with one single knob. To get started, switch on the device at the back. The startup takes approximately 20 seconds. Please note that the user is prompted to conduct once a day a high voltage test. So what is the test about? The test checks any interference and the energy levels. So now let me explain you the core functions of the user interface to define the treatment parameters. You can define the energy level in six steps from level three to level eight. In the second row, you can adjust the frequency of the pulses from one hertz to 10 hertz. 10 hertz is equal to 10 pulses per second. In the third row, you can define the maximum pulses per treatment. The limit can be adjusted while you treat the patient. On the bottom, on the left, you find the pulse counter. In the middle, the reset button. And on the right, the operating menu, which contains system information and further settings. Now, having the parameters set, you can proceed with your actual treatment. Thank you very much for watching and hopefully see you soon. Okay, this was the first video, uh, Volker. Uh, yes, do you want me to try the second one? I had a slight delay on the video. It is the standard treatment uh, video, yes. right? I will start that video if you agree. Yeah. In the following part, I in the following part, I show you one indication, indication for, example, for example, and then I and show then I you how easy it is to set up for two more. We start with the coxartrosis as a degenerative disease. First, I leave the patient lying on his side, if possible, but he can also stand beside the treatment table, for example. Now I'm starting the magnetolid, set at level 8, and 8 Hz. Searching with the applicator for the most painful area. When I found the point, I positioned the patient in this case in a supine position because the pain point is strong ventrally. Underlay the knees with a knee roll so that the patient lies comfortable and stable. Now attach the applicator to the holding arm and adjust it above the treatment point. I set the parameters individually for the patient, in his case level 7, 10 Hz and 2000 pulses.
the treatment can lead in isolated cases to mild side effects like pain during and redness also after the treatment which should subside uh, completely within 24 hours. Always remember to position the patient in a stable and comfortable position. If you leave the room during uh, the treatment, make sure that you are always within call. So we are done. 2,000 pulses are delivered. The device stopped automatically. To come to an end, following you see possible positions of the applicator for the indications. Osteitis pubis, mostly in supine position, and lower back pain, possible for example in prone position or in seat. The first treatment should be carried out by the therapist or doctor to find the individual intensity and pain localization. Further meetings can be delegated to trained medical personnel. The intensity can be adjusted from level 3 moderate to the highest level 8 via the touch screen. From level 3 to level 7 a maximum frequency of up to 10 Hz is possible. At level 8 the maximum frequency is 8 Hz. Treatment is usually performed with 2000 to 3600 pulses per zone and no more then 15,000 pulses should be delivered per session. Well, Volker. Yes. Um, there I am. Yeah. I hope I didn't uh, break your internet connection with the video. <laughs> No, you didn't. You didn't. Actually, okay. uh, you cope very well with the new situation of COVID and uh, Corona because um, with this videos, you made a beautiful presentation of the practical part, which we could have had here in the building. But now with this video, it's uh, rather good uh, to, to see how it works and how easily uh, adjusted the machine and the applicator. Uh, there are a few questions I would like to ask you, uh, short questions. You said that the brain is uh, an area where you should not treat. Yeah. Where I know is that in Asia, they treat the brain uh, for uh, addiction and psychology problems, etc. Can you, um, can yeah. you explain? So um, what we have seen um, also with um, other devices which are on the market, as you just said, it, um, is that they are treating um, the brain um, area. So far, we do not have any kind of um, clinical data um, regarding our EMTT device. So if there is any kind of harm and uh, therefore we show it um, currently as a contraindication. Um, okay, and cervical uh, arthrosis, for example. Can yeah, what, um, exactly. What we have received is um, what about um, treating, let's say, the, the shoulder um, or, or the neck? And um, that is um, no issue. But um, the recommendation is um, not to hold the applicator directly um, onto, onto your head. Just okay. because we don't have the data. Okay, thank you. And you say that implants are a problem. I understand that uh, active implants like a pacemaker that's a no-go area, but uh, uh, prosthesis, osteoprothesis material, um, yeah. you, it can be treated. The, the, Dr. Gerdesmeyer showed that. Yes. Um, and you say if they are MR safe, I don't think a patient knows if his implant is MR safe. At least I don't know. I have one in my leg. Yeah. Um, okay. What is uh, your advice? <laughs> Yeah, so, so the advice is basically um, it's, it's um, the responsibility at the end um, of, the, of the doctor to, um, to get this kind of information. Um, so the recommendation is so far, and, and I'm very conservative in this case, is that um, if, you are, if you have an implant and you don't know what kind of implant it is, respectively, if it is MR safe, I would not recommend um, to undergo the treatment. Until that point, um, until it is clarified what kind of um, implant uh, you are wearing. Yeah, 
Maybe Dr. Gerdesmeyer can uh, can answer to that as well. Is yeah. there a time frame that uh, implants were uh, magnetic uh, um, a magnetic field uh, adopted, or uh, can we say that uh, in the last ten years every implant is MR safe? I think all metal implants they are they are pretty safe. Um, as said before, I using it uh, after um, osteosynthesis. Um, I use it after bone fracture. I use it in in total knees and total hips. And um, the discussion was long time that heating up the implants by high frequency electromagnetic field therapies, but it said by the speed which is uh, provided by the EMTT, no heating occurs. Mm -hmm. So I think I think at the end it's complete safe. Um, instead of, of warnings, I think it's a huge indication field. Mm. Yes, and so heating is an issue. Can you feel heat in in the depth in the hip, or no heating is heating is not an issue. Heating is not an issue. Okay, only in uh, these special tattoos, which we see a lot, of course, uh, nowadays. Um, but that's in the surface of the skin. I suppose that you feel heat in the skin. So isn't it the case that if you don't feel heat, you can treat? No heat, you treat. <laughs> Maybe I can answer that um, technically. So, as I said, um, it is, first of all, um, a question what kind of ink. And um, as far as I know, the ink which have been used um, in the past, um, it could contain, especially the blue and the black ink, uh, metallic particles. But it's not only about what kind of ink it is. It's also the question of what kind of form of tattoo you have. For instance, if you have the, the symbol of, um, if you have a ring and uh, which is basically a kind of a circuit breaker, it could end up in um, heat, heat up, uh, heating up the skin. But again, it is, is, is rare. We haven't seen that, um, nor our competitors. Um, and um, therefore, it's, I think um, it's very limited, this risk. Okay, so it's a theoretical case. Yes. And uh, yeah. All right. Um, Ruth, are there some other questions that have to be asked? I think that uh, Professor Gerdesmeyer has uh, answered a lot of questions. Thank you for that. Um, which brings us to the end of the, the session, I think. Um, for me, uh, it was a clear information, uh, uh, theoretical and practical. Of course, there are a lot of questions. In a new therapy like this, we see a similarity with uh, shockwave therapy. There are a lot of questions about indications, about uh, dosage, intensity, um, an interval between treatments, uh, number of sessions. Uh, we can base our treatment today on the information that Professor Gerdesmeyer has gained and, and told us about. That could be a very good start uh, for now. And of course, in the future, new information will uh, will be re released in scientific papers. Uh, there are some studies running uh, right now. And with this new information, we can, if necessary, adopt our parameters to the new standards. Um, I think we have seen a lot of new indications that can be treated. Uh, some indications are not in your clinic today like uh, uh, pubic osteitis, uh, bone edema are really indications, in my opinion, that, uh, that go to the hospital, to the orthopedic uh, uh, specialist, to the surgeon. But if you connect to them and uh, offer them this treatment in cases where they don't have a lot of other options, as I understood, you could very well um, uh, attract new patients to your clinic and make the investment of a unit like this uh, affordable and uh, uh, you will have uh, a, a lot of uh, income extra to cover at least all the cost, which is uh, also uh, a therapy with a low amount of uh, cost for uh, labor. So as we heard, you can connect the patient to the applicator and then you can, maybe not the first time, but after that you can leave the room because the patient feels comfortable and knows what he is going to experience. So uh, without the investment, you cannot give it, of course. Um, we as a company, we uh, would like to support you in this and give you information if you want. 
and uh, talk about the investment and the return uh, of investment time that, that is connected with the investment. And uh, more important than that is that we have a lot of patients that are, will be very happy with this new option. I think if you listen to the lecture, you can probably see some patients that you have sent away without the good result that you wish to them. Um, you could uh, connect to them again and offer them this treatment and uh, try to help them. Okay, well, thanks uh, Ludger Gersmeyer for your excellent presentation. It was a pleasure again to have you here. Um, the same to you, uh, Raphael and Volker. Um, thanks for the information. We can connect in the future. And of course, uh, there are some uh, therapists in Holland that already bought the unit. So the first clinical experience in Holland, we, we will build that up uh, the next months. Um, I would very much like to share that with you. And uh, let's uh, share knowledge to, to improve as quick as possible. Thank you for now. For the spectators, tomorrow the video of this uh, session will be released. You will get an email about that. And then you can uh, look it back uh, and uh, show it to your colleagues as well. And for now, thank you for being here. Have a nice evening and uh, good luck and uh, take care. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Okay. Take care. You're welcome.